Thursday night, the low 35. Sunny and warmer for Thursday, the high 65. That's the latest from Oak 93.5. I'm now cast meteorologist Matthew Harding. What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Camus Leonardo, here with RDU Live Tapped In. Shout out to the homie Cameron McCarty. Oh, yeah, and y'all need to stop playing with my boy Cameron McCarty, man. He going to bring out that uh, Jackson, Mississippi out if y'all keep testing him. So I just wanted to add that real quick. But, uh, yeah, we are here Tuesday, 6 p.m. Um, I'm not a Mets fan. Don't worry. This is just the shirt that I got uh, out of deep in the closet. Y'all know how that go when you don't do laundry. And, you know, you just got to find something and make it shake. So, you know, we're just making it shake. But today, I have a very special... That was a horrible job. It's okay. Do it again. Let's try it again. And today, I have a very special guest. Uh-huh. At okay, this point... Yeah, just give it up. Hold on. Let's talk. You say the line. I'll do it on the table. Okay. Today, we have a very special guest. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we'll work on that. We'll work on that. All right. So look, I'm gonna let the y'all know how I do on tapped in. I let the guests introduce themselves. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Tara Lynn. I am here. Okay. <laughs> here today. Okay. Um, I would like to think of myself as a journalist media Mm -hmm. lover music lover Mm -hmm. um just all around lover of people Mm -hmm. and the culture okay with that being said why do you do it for the culture Mm. and and we talked about it um well if you guys knew dame prior to this professional (laughs) sit-up um (laughs) He had another podcast where he got into my business really deeply. Oh, yeah. You hit your signature. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a couple more that's yeah. coming for you. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you are you're good at what you do. You open people up. Thank and, you. Um, yeah, you got a lot out of me. So I hope you get all of this out of me. Will do. I think it's just a testament of actually caring. You know what yeah. I mean? Because nowadays, a lot of people with podcasts and shows and stuff, I feel like uh, they kind of are selfish with it and just like, hey, I'm going to use the platform so I can talk. But it's like. Yeah. And it's a lot of pushing narratives, mm. like their own narratives, and then they'll try to group people in and like find their people that way. Mm. But it's like, just speak for yourself mm-hmm. and then ask the collective to chime in facts so what's one narrative that like gets on your nerves i'm so tired of this men and women gender war wake it up it's so old like yeah the concept of how you treat somebody and how to make somebody like you and love you and Mm. it's manipulation and it's just like let's talk about self-love individual love and how we can be good to ourselves and then let's talk about how we can be good to others instead of these individual thoughts that we have to like try to one up each other. Mm. And it's like we really I, I don't get it. We need each other. Like Yeah. You want to bash this side because Yeah, I'm about to go somewhere else. Bring me back. No, we can go there <laughs> if you want to now. Bring me back. But um so let me ask this. With the whole gender wars and mm-hmm. everything that's going on, correct? Do you just feel like everybody is just hurt? Yes. Yeah. And I feel like it's unrealistic. Mm. Why so? Because you're saying like, well, men, we like to do this. Mm-hmm. And women, we like to do this. But I think you should just like speak for yourself. Like if mm. you're a terrible person, mm-hmm. you go be a terrible person in the corner. Or you go find your terrible group of people. Mm-hmm. Don't try to push this narrative on to the rest of men and women. Mm. And I like to practice the golden rule. I live by it. And, and what's the golden rule for those who don't know? You treat others how you want to be treated. Wow. It's very simple. It's so simple. It is, but it's not. Well, if 
It is to us because we practice it and we live it. But for those who just constantly make excuses and who focuses on the problem and not solutions, it's difficult. It's just like if you if you give good, you may get bad. Mm. But that's a risk you take. But you keep on being good. So what do you tell people who are good and constantly receives like bad stuff? You keep on being good. But what if they're tired of being good? Listen, you have to have duality. Wake it up. And a shadow side. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm a Libra. I know people are like, oh, you can't blame your life on your zodiac sign. Well, hey, if my scales tip, you better be careful. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because I really like to be balanced. I like for things to be even. I Mm -hmm. like for things to be fair. Mm -hmm. I like to give, receive, and all that good stuff. But you're going to run into people because it's just the way of the world. So how do you make things fair in a society that's obviously not fair? You just have to create it in your own world. Like I said, you have to keep, you have to know who you are Mm -hmm. at the core. Mm -hmm. You have to give who you are, like just be who you are. And if people come against you and they're um, rude, mean, malicious, um, they don't have good intentions, that's them. Mm. That's them. And they're going to get theirs. Mm. They're going to run up on somebody who's going to run up on them. That's a fact. And it just, I just feel like don't let it harden your heart. Mm. don't harden your heart because the rest of the world because if you spread like you ever smile at somebody who wasn't Mm. smiling and then they smile yeah 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 it's contagious so like keep being good Mm -hmm. you may not change this person but you might change the next person Mm. and just like i just wish people understood that it's your life you get to make it what it is and Mm. don't let other people try to come in and force you to be somebody you're not because they's like this it's cool to be manipulative and nasty mm. now and have the upper hand no mm-hmm. this it's not cool you're gonna lose in the end that's a fact you're gonna lose that's a fact you know what i think we need to wake up to though i think we need to wake up people who are givers it's okay to receive it's okay to want to receive because a lot of times when it comes to people who constantly give they feel like they have to struggle right they feel like they have to go through things and sacrifice and right oh that's the word of the day word of the day boundaries what does boundaries mean to you this is live live. okay everybody imagine boundaries (laughs) so what boundaries mean to you oh gosh i'm learning to have them but Mm -hmm. their boundaries mean to me just respect yeah and protection of oneself Mm. Um, like if I say I love myself, I can't allow you to push me around. Mm. I can't allow you to mistreat me or come against me. Mm-hmm. And I have to set up what, what hurts me. And that's a line you don't need to cross. Mm. What makes me sad. That's a line you don't need to cross. Right. What irritates me. That's a line you don't need to cross. Right. And so if you cross that line and you're going to get the other side, but it's just like, I'm going to uphold this and you respect it mm-hmm. or you get out of my face. That's a fact. That's a fact. So with that being said, I think it all boils down to communication. Communication. You agree? I do. So when it comes to communication, how important is that to you? It's everything. Mm-hmm. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, my name is Tara Talk Too Much. <laughs> I do a lot of that. Wake it up. Um, sometimes I talk too much to my own detriment, mm. um, but I'm always looking for answers. My attention is always to get to the bottom of things, hence me wanting to write and find things out and mm-hmm. it's it's who i am really right i'm gonna ask why and why do you feel that way mm-hmm. and why do you think that way yeah. and how do you know yeah um and i think if you don't communicate it's just like this blank space of uh, what mm. this question marks like help me fill those in if you don't mind yeah so i don't come to my own narrative my own conclusion mm. that may be wrong mm. so I think communication, that's, I mean, that's just a way of life. Animals communicate. That's a fact. Nonverbal the, communication. Yeah, nonverbal. Like, mm. we communicate in so many different ways. It's, it's just like give something. Yeah. Lend something to the conversation. Lend yeah. something. Lend a part of you. It's mm. give. It's vulnerability. Mm. I, think a, I think that's why a lot of people can't do it right. Why? Because you have to be vulnerable when you communicate with somebody. I mean, you can lie all day, but mm-hmm. when we're, like, really into it, conversing and getting down to it, you're going to have to open up a space in you mm-hmm. and let me, like, let me into your brain and let me into your mind, let me into your heart. So how do you make someone vulnerable who's constantly lived their whole lives in survival mode? Uh, you can't. Mm. You really can't. Um, that's another thing that's to my detriment. 
What's that? Trying to force people to change. Communicate. Communicate. Yeah. Communicate how though? On my. Ooh. <laughs> Don't you start with me. Okay. <laughs> Don't you start with me. Communicate how? On my level. What's your level? Deep. Mm. Deep, deep. So do you feel like. Is it wrong to be surface level? No. Because, you know, some people may not know how to go deep. It's not wrong to be surface level. You definitely can't tell it. You can't get vulnerable with everybody. Right. So how do you assess when to be vulnerable and when to not be vulnerable? I think it's more of a feeling and intuition. Mm. Um, Like, I feel safe with you. Okay. Thank you. So you you will get a lot out of me. Right. And you also present a safe space. Wow. It's a safe space. Right. Yeah. We'll wait that up. <laughs> um, I think it's just like a trust within you. Like, oh, I can tell this person this. Mm-hmm. And even if they use it wrong against you. Yeah. It's just the fact that you tried. Mm. It's just the fact that you did it. So that goes back to like forgiveness sometimes because... <clears throat> sometimes we have to forgive not for others but for ourselves as well or for ourselves first yes. really right so when it comes to communication where do you think we went wrong now mm-hmm. we don't we we talk with our fingers mm, wake that up we talk to screens tap it in we talk to things mm. And then when we get with a person who's not AI, um, if you heard the song, um, SZA, um, Caught in a Machine, it's off, it's off her SOS album. Okay. Um, and she's singing about AI, conversation is so boring. Mm. I did this, what about that? Mm. I don't agree. It's like rebuttals and mm. you got to be wrong. I got to prove you right. You got to see my point. You got to feel me. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just like, and then people say mean things. I think we've lost the art of face-to-face, mm-hmm. feeling, mm-hmm. connection. Yeah. We don't do that anymore. Yeah. And so when you try to converse with someone is awkward because mm. you don't have time to calculate your answers mm. you don't have time to be fake right you don't right have time to I show that mask yeah yeah so when it comes to talking to the screens and uh things of that nature right how do you feel like we can improve on communication by because obviously we can't sit here and say don't use your phones no more because no, no, it's a part of, not, of the life, it's right? The way of life so how do we balance it? I think you have to sometimes have that. Well, not sometimes. Mm-hmm. You definitely have to have a support system in real life, IRL. <laughs> Facts. Um, you have to have a support system. For me, it's my mom. It's my grandmother. It's yes. my sister. It's yeah. my best friends. Mm-hmm. I can call them. Yeah. And go to their homes, mm-hmm. hang up the phone, put my phone down, mm-hmm. and we look at each other and we feel each other. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, it's just us. Yeah. It's nothing else but us. It's no one here to influence us. It's no one here to distract us. Right. And what you get is what you get in the mm-hmm. moment. And you take that in, you internalize it, you keep it because you don't know when you're going to get that again. Mm. Right? Wow. That's real. Oh, Lord. That's real. <laughs> so, because one thing I've learned through experience, right, mm-hmm. is like, uh, you know how it is working in media. Yeah. A lot of the times when, you know, I just be mobbing and moving, right, everybody's like, yo, damn, man, do a recap for me. Yo, damn, do an interview. Da-da, yo, damn, yo, damn. And it's like, sometimes I just want to be in the moment. Play in the moment. You know right? what I'm saying? Sometimes I just want to be in the audience and like just capture yeah. the vibe and just feel and, and be there. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go back. And can't i mean don't get me wrong I mean, you can, but, but that's one thing i love about media though because it's like documentation of the process but it has to be a balance to where you're not documenting everything right but you create an infrastructure to where you can document but still mingle and still kind of figure out your way or incorporate that into the documentation you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying which is why i like interviews because yeah. for me i like to get to know people i like to talk to people and when it comes to platforms that whatever i do I want people to see the human side of right. people versus just selling a title or selling an object or a product, which you can, by the yeah. way, you're not wrong by doing that. 
But at the same time, it's like people buy into the why, not the what anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? So communication, right? Mm -hmm. For, let's say, what what generation are you part of? What did I say? Millennials? Millennials? The one before this one. <laughs> in my 30s so i don't know oh so millennials yeah millennials so you remember when uh we was able to go outside you remember when we met up with people at you the mall what? i was talking about that the other day and Wake i was like up. i'm showing my age but i remember my first computer mm. it was the big box deal yeah the ibm with the the disc Ooh, I had the, the black you had the white. disc Yes. The floppy disk or the, the regular? Disc. Oh, the floppy. Yes, and Dang. I could play games on there. You had to stick it in. And yeah. I I grew up through that. I grew mm -hmm. up through um, dial up. Yeah. The desk. AOL. Uh, LimeWire. Yeah. MySpace. Yeah. What's it? B Bebo. Google? Be Bebo. Wait. Bebo. Yeah, Bebo. Yeah, like Bebo. That. Yeah. Like I was blessed to see it. Yeah. All like mm. my first CD player. I remember all of that. Yeah. And now where I am, I'm like, I'm still young enough to enjoy mm. the transition. Yeah. But it was like nostalgic. It's nostalgic now because everything is. you had to, you had to work for it. I don't know how to explain it. No, that, that's but. a fact. I think um, <laughs> that's, that's a big thing nowadays. Mm -hmm. I think this instant gratification is a beautiful thing, mm -hmm. but it's also dangerous too. Yeah. Because for us, and of course, generations prior to us, we were able to go out and get it. And I, I guess you can, mm, I don't know about the generation after us, because I don't be keeping up with the names and stuff. I'd be forgetting if I'm being honest. The X? X and then Z. And then, that's why I don't know. I just yeah. know where I'm wrong. Right. And so, I don't judge the rest. Yeah, no. And, and that's what I was going to say. Like, I, I I don't like this conversation of like, oh, our generation is better. Da, 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 right. Well, because. I actually kind of got it worse. Who? The newer kids. You think so? Why do you think so? As far as humanity. Okay. Why do you think that? Actually, you know what? Nah, humanity's been terrible from the, the whole jump. time. Yeah. Like, if you think about it, yeah. everybody's been trash. Yeah. <laughs> Every Thanks. generation has been straight trash. Everybody. People are trash. Yeah. We're trash. <laughs> nah, for real. We're trash. Your human race is trash. <laughs> We're pretty much parasites on Earth right now. We are. Yeah. And don't get me started on cutting trees. Yeah. Anyway, that's a whole nother feeling. Yeah. But <laughs> um, when it comes to, uh, I feel like the future generations, right? Mm -hmm. It's easy to say like they got it worse. But then when you really think about it, it kind of got it made. Kind of. Because like now you have, like I met this 17 year old, right? Mm -hmm. uh, from Atlanta. Uh, Tim, shout out to Tim. Uh, he is his own fashion designer. I forgot the name. I am so sorry, Tim. But I forgot the name of the brand. But 17 years old, right? And I was just talking to him. And, you know, at school, he had uh, sells his clothes at school, so right? Cool. And, like, had everything just on his phone and, mm -hmm. you know, keep track of everything, right? But one thing I've noticed is the whole thing of the instant gratification and the accessibility, they think they know it all, right? And they have access to it and they still don't look. But I think the narrative nowadays is it's so easy to come up with a headline that catches your attention. And as long as it hooks you, because everybody wants to be first, nobody wants to be right. You know what I'm saying? So I just think when it comes to communication, uh, there should be more conversations about how can we create solutions. So with that being said, how do you feel like we can kind of bridge that gap between future generations and our generations when it comes to communication, when it comes to accessibility, when it comes to technology, right? And advancement overall as a human race. How do you think we could bridge that gap? I think everything now is like content, 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 capture mm -hmm. the moment, get into it. But I, it's so unrealistic to say this, but I wish there were spaces where you put your phone down. Mm. And you just connect mm. with people. And I don't know if I see that happening worldwide, mm. but I feel like people can make spaces mm. where you can unplug, mm. unwind, mm. and remember that you're human. Right. You know? Yeah. And it's not something you have to do in solitude. You can come together and do As that. a unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. 
and and I mean I see the narratives of being human on online and things you can do online, but I'm not gonna stop my scroll to go be human. Right. Does that make sense? Elaborate. Like I get it, but like just I'm elaborate. watching something informational and I'm inspiring. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna keep. Swiping. Oh yeah, I got you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not yeah, gonna yeah. take into. Um, I'm not gonna take into account what they're telling me. Like, yeah, that's cool. I should go touch grass. I mm-hmm. should go mm-hmm. unplug, but I ain't gonna do it right now. That's a fact. You know, that's a fact. So it, it boils down to like that dopamine fix. Yes. And that's all it is, because I'm I'm so glad you were transparent on that moment, because we all have that moment, right? Where you can scroll and you see some inspirational stuff, and you feel so good in that moment, right? And then as soon as you swipe, moment's gone, like, <laughs> and then you see somebody twerking or something, and you just, <laughs> just like, lost. yes, uh, 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 like, right? Just it's crazy, God, right? yeah. But um, I, I think <sighs> here's how I feel about it. I like the balance. Yeah. I like the balance because I, I don't like people who's like, there's such thing as too woke to me. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You have to get with the times. You have to stay current yeah. to make it make sense. Right. But also there is a thing such as, I don't want to say too ignorant because being ignorant, you just genuinely don't know. But like sometimes people don't care to know. And I don't know a word for that. Is there Stupid. a word for that? Stupid. All right, we'll say stupid. Then. <laughs> I think um, you, that's a it's a choice at that point, right? If you don't care to know, like, mm-hmm. I mean, I got a word, but I can't say it here. I know that word, and I don't think we should say it <laughs> on air. Uh, I'm not gonna <laughs> say it on here. Yeah, but um, <laughs> no, nah, that's a fact. That's a fact, and I think when it comes to that, people need to understand that the only thing you can control is yourself. Right. Right. And I personally, myself, a lot of people consider me wise and stuff, but I feel like experience is the best teacher. Yeah. Um, You can also learn by not going through things. All right, be careful. You can also learn by not going through things and um, learn from somebody else's actions. Right. Yeah. So what would you say is your biggest lesson within your experiences thus far? In life? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Here you go. Oh, yeah. We tapping in now. Um, my biggest lesson thus far is to go with the flow. How do you do that? What does that look like to Tyra? Oh, honey, I don't got it down yet. If you want to be honest, I'm struggling really hard to not control some things, you know, like. Um, Are you a control freak? I like things. Yes. <laughs> so how do you work on that? Um, to sit back and shut up, sit down and shut up. And I know that's weird. But that's not weird. That's, I, that's how I have to, because if I, if I'm always up and moving and talking and doing, mm-hmm. I have to do the opposite mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. which is to let go, mm. like literally let go and go mind your business. I know, mm. like, that's how I have to talk to myself. Like, girl, yeah, what's that got to do with you? Mm. And how you going to fix it? You can't. Mm. What, like, you like to fix things? I do. Tyra the builder? Yeah. Mm. And it's, again, to my detriment because it's like you can't control it. Like you said, you can't control anyone but yourself. Right. So I need to mind my business. Mm. Mm. And once I mind my business, then I have space or I have more, uh, what's the word? I'm more relaxed. More relaxed. Because I'm not carrying the weight of others. Right that wasn't even mine to begin with mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so then i can do more good right instead of instead of controlling i can help i can assist is that still not controlling in a sense though no because i'm gonna let the help like i'm gonna let it come to me if that makes sense like if you instead of me offering it up i'm gonna let it come to me Instead of me telling you. I, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Instead of offering for help, you're let people come to you to ask for help. Right. Versus like saying, hey, you should do this. And right. it's unsolicited and advice. Instead of inserting myself into Got problems you. that are not mine. Out of passion. Yes. Got it. It's more so That's mind your business. And if you're needed, you will be. Mm. That's the problem. And so then it's less stress on me. Mm-hmm. And it's less stress on I mean, I don't know what stress they got. It ain't none of my business. <laughs> Just I like to wrap around. I like to wrap around. 
I like to wrap around. But check this out, y'all. Y'all see, we just having good conversation. Y'all know how we do. But if you want to be a part of this conversation, give us a call at 919-899-9305. Once again, that's 919-899-9305. Going back to the conversation. 919- Wake it up. 899- Mm-hmm. There you go. Come on now. When I first started, call me now. Call me now. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Cleo, man. I saw you saw the documentary. I did. I think they did my girl wrong. They did. Like, Cause she made buku. And she was right most of the time. She was. Yeah. Nah, they just she was just exploited. That's all. Yeah, she was. She was exploited because I, she had a true gift and it was an intuitive gift. Yeah, and yeah. um yeah people because it's trendy now you know what i'm saying back then during the 90s it wasn't trendy and it was seen as like ooh, how can we capitalize off of this Mm -hmm. because we do live in a capitalistic society you know what i'm saying they sell us air don't they (sighs) they're going to they're going to sell us air they're probably going to tax us to go outside i just bought water for like five dollars what kind of water it was a big you know the jug i like to put in my freezer this the still water. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I could have got that for free. What did Orlando Bloom say? They're selling us apples. They're selling us apples, <laughs> grapes, <laughs> grapes. <laughs> nah, yo, I gotta say this, bro. I have to. Orlando Brown be right, yo. He crazy. No, but like he knows what he's doing, dog. Like he, because that's how you gonna capture people's attention. Right. If he's sitting there very calm and cool and like, why are they selling us great? The people gonna be like, man, what are you talking about? He he woke no, we or he really, done. Grace should be free. But I'm telling you, man, like <laughs> shout out to Orlando Brown. I know some of y'all be picking on him out there, but I love you, bro. Thank you for stating the truth for us. Cause I know sometimes you gotta add cuckoo so they don't, you know, see you as a target. So I get it, bro. I get it. Um That was funny. Nah, it's so that was true. Funny. It is though. He's selling us apples. They are. They are. I think um <laughs> Dual citizenship. Just, just look that up, y'all. Just make sure. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I think. Uh, <laughs> <We gotta laughs> make sure y'all look here. into that for real, because it's it's woo, it's rough, dog. Like we could sit here and talk all night about that, but we're gonna put this back on tire because this is for tire. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, my next question for you is: uh, We were speaking on communication, mm-hmm. self control. Um, what's one thing you know for a fact that you need to work on and fix in this present moment? Um, one thing I need to work on. And I'll answer after you. Well, we talked about boundaries. Mm -hmm. We talked about letting go of control. Mm. And those are two really big things that I'm actually currently going through Okay, is learning my boundaries, mm-hmm. learning, uh, learning to respect other people's boundaries, what capacity they have to mm-hmm. give, yeah. not forcing and controlling and pulling and begging. And it's a lot. Yeah. Um, that's really what I'm working on as far as communication and learning like i said when to speak Mm. when to say nothing yeah yeah um move with discernment yes discernment Mm. Mm. that's a great word i use that a lot learn who to speak to yeah about what yeah when yeah where right how why why Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um you know that's I will say that's something that I'm really honestly dealing with on my own. Yeah. Just just making sure I am who I say I am mm. and being like doing what I say I'm gonna do. Do you feel like you are who you say you are? No. Why is that? Because I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I but that's okay to not know. I thought I knew. Mm. And then now I'm like, whoa, it's dark over here, baby. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's nice to walk around and and act like I got it all together. I don't know. I mean, if y'all think I got it together, that's on y'all. I just want to say I am not projecting. I mean, I might look cute, but, you know, it could be a bad day up in here. That's a fact. You don't got to look bad. If you feel bad, just take that. So what Take advice it. would you give to people out there who uh, has a tendency to isolate? 
when it comes to having those type of days, right? Because you have people in the field or in the industry Mm -hmm. that we're both in, right? And um, a lot of the times it takes work ethic to get to a point of still going, right? And, And still moving and advancement as a whole. What advice would you give to people who um, may have that fire and that desire within them to say, yo, I want to go out and show the world what it is that I'm capable of, but I'm just, I, I'm I'm scared or I, I just don't know, you know? What would you say to them? Well, because I am one of those people. Same. I would say isolation is good. Mm-hmm. Take some time. Even Jesus went out to the wilderness. I, I'm going to have to disagree. I, I, so it's, a, it's a difference Not between isolation and alone time and solitude. Okay. I feel like isolation is protection, mm-hmm. solitude is preparation. Okay. I was speaking about solitude. Okay. Um, isolation, I don't. You can still isolate though, because like if you're in a scenario where yeah. like, oh, I got to get out of Dodge, right? Quit. Yeah. Isolate. You know what Remember I'm saying? Protection, yeah. Right. Um, okay. Isolation. Speaking from isolation, I, I think, I don't think. Yeah, don't do that. Mm. Like you have to find your people. Right. Find a friend, even if it's one person mm. that you can talk to. We all need someone. My mom always says, "You don't live in this world alone." Mm. And you will need somebody. Mm-hmm. And I don't know who you're gonna find, but there's somebody out there. To talk to you can call a hotline if you don't yeah. have someone that's close to you. Yeah. But you will need someone that can listen to you. Mm. And let you speak freely. Wow. No judgment. No judgment. Mm. And I want to say, just go find that person, family, friend, therapist, pay somebody. And I'm glad you said that because I think the problem is nowadays a lot of us get so infatuated with the romance Mm -hmm. to where you can meet somebody and feel like, oh, this person gets me. I'm going to fall in love with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, why you got to do that? (laughs) Yeah. So I, I think it's it's good to differentiate between like the platonic love mm-hmm. and the romantic love, because before we can even get that romantic love, you got to love yourself. Yeah. And going back to what I'm dealing with, I had to learn the difference between self-love and self-worth. Right. So I'm going I'm to elaborate on that. So what I've learned is like with self-love or self-care, there are moments. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The self-worth, that's the long game. That's the war. The self-care and the self-love is the battles, right? So you know how they say, like, if you lose a battle, you ain't lose the war. Right. A lot of the times, I didn't show up for myself in the self-love or self-care. You know why? Because I didn't have the self-worth. So I had to learn my worth and my value. And my problem was, I was like, man, I don't want people to think I'm too arrogant or I'm too cocky. I was worried about what other people was thinking. And that's the start of the downfall. Yep. And I was spiraling. Oh, for yeah. sure. I was spiraling. But then when I got to a point of this is I'm supposed to be here. This is what I've worked for. There's one thing to ask for. it. It's one thing to manifest. Right. Okay. But I've worked for this and I took it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, 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 to everyone out there, like you belong where you at, y'all. Like y'all got to stop. I understand imposter syndrome. We all still with or still deal with it. I deal with it to this day. But it comes a point in time to where you just have to get in your bag and um, don't chase it. Magnetize it. It's a difference. You know what I'm saying? So how do you magnetize and not chase? Mm, I've I've been chasing for a a long time and Mm. I had to, again, stop. Mm. Mind my business. (laughs) Actually, that's how I do it. Just minding your business. Mind my business. It's simple. Because it's it's in what I want. I'm... I'm in my space to command things to come to me. Mm-hmm. And once I'm, that's, that's when you stop chasing. When you stop minding your, when you start minding your business, things change. They come to you. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, oh, here. Yeah. Here, here, here. here. Yeah. Um, I thought you over there minding your business, but here you go. Yeah. You know, so I think that's how I'm learning to bring things to me mm. and learning to strengthen who I am and what I want mm. because I'm like you said not worried about what other people think yeah because they don't know what they want anyway right 
Like, right. why am I listening? None of us do like, when we really think about yeah, it. Yeah, like, you don't know. Like, I'm sitting over here trying to figure myself out. Mm-hmm. What makes me think that you got yourself together? Exactly. What makes you think that you got yourself together? Yeah. What makes you think that you can tell me what to do? Exactly. What makes me think that I should listen to you? Right. Yeah. Uh, that was a great poem. <laughs> Phenomenally. <laughs> that was a great poem, yo. Like, Say that one more time. I forgot it. Nah, it'd be like that. <laughs> that that was hey, <laughs> that was also Maya Angela. Rest in peace, baby girl. But wow, man, Thank like you. that Thank was you. phenomenally. <laughs> but, but um, nah, that's real. Yeah, it's just more so. Just it's your life. Like you sleep with yourself at night. You wake up alone. You're ain't like no one knows you like you do. Mm. So it's like, do you? Mm. Do you really? Mm. Because who's going to tell you you're not doing you right? Mm. How does somebody saying that? Mm. I just like, I don't want to go off topic here, but like. No, keep going. Fun. You good. When I'm watching like Instagram comments and yeah. stuff. And you know, I'm a big Beyonce fan. Okay. Beehive, gold member. Go Work it up. Swipe the card out. Go to war for Beyonce. Because. So you're not platinum. <sighs> Honey, I, I got to get there yet. I don't, I'm okay. Not, you working towards it. Yeah. So I was room for improvement. I love her, but like, sure. I probably won't fight. Physically for her, got you. So go. I think gold is a great. You apart. Got yeah. you. Gold. Like okay. Barb. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, <laughs> like it's just you see what she brings to the table. You see she's unproblematic. You see this. You see that. And um, I see people like trying to tell her how to do her. Do her. Mm-hmm. And they kind of like put her dreams down, and mm. like. It's just, I just watch. Projection. Yeah, I just watch people talk. And even, not even Beyonce, just anyone. Right. Anybody, anybody but that's just an example. Yeah, just an mm-hmm. example. Just anybody who's up here. Mm-hmm. People who are not mm-hmm. on, on a professional level. Mm-hmm. I watch them try to like tear them down and tell them that you can't do it. You're this or you're that. And you're, mm-hmm. they're projecting. And I'm like, did that make sense to you? Yes. And let me ask this. When it comes to a Beyonce, as as an example, yeah. right, you have to be delusional uh-huh. in order to get to that point, right? right? And you can't, you can't even, you can't even, it, you don't got it. it. Right. It wasn't even <laughs> existing. Where she's at now, I'm pretty sure she didn't even know she was going to be there, right? So how do you, when you're here and you see someone there, how do you build that delusion and that 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 confidence, that consistency, that persistence to even get there? Because a lot of the times, the half of the battle is doing it and showing up, right? Yeah, for me, it's just, I lost my train of thought, I was going to say. But it's like, I always say, you can't, you're obviously not a dreamer. Like, you can't be a realist and try to put down a dreamer. Mm, why is that because you don't have the vision you don't have the foresight you don't Mm. you don't know what a dream is Mm. so you can't you can't catch the concept i can't even find the words but it's Mm. like a dreamer wouldn't talk down on another dreamer like Mm. you don't have the magic to make this happen that's why you doubt Mm. why do you think why do you think a realist uh usually doubts dreamers where do you think it stems from they don't they're they're too stuck in the real world. They don't know what magic is. Mm. They don't know what magic is. And What's magic? The like you said, the will, the foresight. Mm. Like you, you're creating. Magic is creation. So everybody has the magic. It's just about how you utilize it. It's about it. how you utilize it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, but if you can't conceive the thought of me doing this, then you're like your first thought is to shoot it down. Mm. And it's like, you, why are you even talking to me right. about this? Like, you're not, you're not pouring into me. You're actually trying to take from me. Wow. You're trying to pull from me. You're like not giving me anything positive. And it's just like, you can't do this. Like, no, you can't do this. Mm. You ever heard somebody say, I, it couldn't be me. Yeah. I can't do that. It yeah. ain't me. Right. You right, baby. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> it ain't you. It's not going to be you. Right. Cause you can't conceive it, you right. can't think it, you can't dream it. Right. So you sit over there, you little bubble of doubt. Right. And watch. I don't right. Know. <laughs> like, I don't know. That came from the heart. It did yeah. because I be really wanting it's like. No, nah, talk, talk your talk. Yeah, you just gotta talk your like, talk. Yeah, treat people how you want to be treated. Feed yeah. love, give love, give magic, give life. Yeah. Just take all that nastiness and negativity mm. and go sit in the corner with your people and yeah. y'all just ride away together. Mm. Is there such thing as hyper positivity in your world? I mean, 
I think there's a there should be a balance okay. of realis- realism mm-hmm. and magic. You okay. Know? Um, but I mean, hi- hyper positivity in my world, no. So there's never too much positivity. I mean, sometimes it could be a detriment. Like I can't fly. Don't be sitting here talking about you can do it. Jump off the building, girl. Right. Like <laughs> it's standing I'm on the roof. Die. I ain't breaking no. You ain't gonna break nothing. <laughs> but it's you gonna like, come down healthy, intact, <laughs> all that. But it's more so like, hey, maybe you should take this parachute with you. You could do. Who's it going? Where's the parachute coming from? If you're going to offer me some advice, give me the parachute. I See, for me personally, I'll just be like, I think you should get down. <laughs> you know? Like, cause it's not what you say, it's how you say it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, it's like if I hand you a parachute, right, mm-hmm. where am I going to get the parachute from? Right? Yeah. And then before I even hand you the parachute, is it even high enough to where the parachute can, like, you know what I'm saying? Well, see, now you're turning into a realist. I'm, but I'm, I, but I'm both though. But you, you have to be it right. Makes sense in this world. So like, how? That's what I'm asking. Like, how? How do you coexist with both? I mean, it's. Uh, I, ooh, you stopped me in my tracks. Mm-hmm. Train coming. <laughs> okay, interview. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it has to happen. Like. I don't want to say the world is going to bring you down at some point. Yeah. But I mean, it's life. Life is mm. going to knock you down. Yeah. And that's where you get your, your realism from. Right. But, from experience. Yes. From experience. Great. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to stop believing though. You'd be like, okay, maybe I was a little too ambitious. Mm-hmm. Maybe I might need to bring it back and plan mm-hmm. and do the work mm-hmm. and still keep that positivity. Mm-hmm. But I think it's like a package. I don't mm. think Beyonce got to where she got to by dreaming. Right. Obviously, right. we saw the work, right. we saw the plan, mm. we saw it, we saw the dream. Mm. You know, so I think it, you you have to have that healthy dose of both. But mm. like I said, from experience, mm. um, once you, because everything you try, you're gonna fail at some things. Fail, failure is inevitable. Yeah, you know what and I mean? so I think that's where the realism comes in mm. with the failure. Okay. And the experience. Because it's part of the process. Right. Right. But okay. you can still think think highly, think positive. Anything yeah. can happen. Yeah. You know. No, I feel that because for me personally, like growing up, I grew up around. First of all, I grew up around a lot of strong women. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Don't get me wrong. My father was in my life. It's just my father and my mother kind of went through it. And then, you know, when you're in the middle of that, you kind of have to feel like you pick sides. But yeah. the whole time you putting that on yourself. So now you're like, uh, you know, even though until you get to an adult, you're like, dang, I was tripping. Right. Mm-hmm. So I've had, you know, male figures in my life. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, I was able to kind of like take things from uh, different males in my life. Right. As well as my father, too. But uh, one thing that I've noticed uh, is that how I was raised, a lot of people was practical around me, mm-hmm. right? Very, very practical. Like, it was just like money, 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 right? Yeah. And for the longest, I had such a weird relationship with money mm-hmm. um, until I broke the code, right? What you got? Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so... What I've realized is that money itself is energy. And when I invested on maintaining a high level energy, I've noticed the gravitational pull of not necessarily money, but when I was able to provide value, that's when it came in. My problem was I was thinking about it because I was like, thinking about it from like a scarcity standpoint of like not having it or I need more, I need more. Cause you know how they say screaming out no is the same thing as screaming out. Yes. So it's like, exactly. So it's like me saying I'm broke, I'm broke versus saying, okay, this is temporary. I ain't got it right now. You know what I'm saying? That self-talk, right? That's the trick is the self-talk because for the longest, I'm not even going to lie. Even to this day, like I'm not buku balling. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, last year, I had uh, lost my house, mm-hmm. uh, lost my car, right? Um, lost my dog, right? So it was just like back to back to back to back hits. And um, of course, when you win it, you like, man, right? You're going crazy. Yeah. But um, it made me realize that 
everything being a taken away from me is an opportunity for a fresh start. But also, um, it made me realize like how much I took it for granted. Yeah. What I had. Right. And just like I didn't even realize how that was a luxury within itself. But then here's another layer to it. Sometimes with people, that's all they got is tangible items and you know what I'm saying? Like physicality of things. And they're not wrong because that's what they know. But when you, you know how they say if it's like, it's one thing when it's on you, but it's another thing if it's in you. So I, I think uh, it's very important going back to the energy, right? People would never know if you got $5, five cents, negative 500, whatever. It's just about how you carry yourself because you never know. Like you high level can take you out of that depth, right? Can mm -hmm. take you to that next step because yeah. of that gravitational pull of that good energy. So what are ways do you maintain your high level energy? I call my grandma. Wake it up. <laughs> Shout out to granny. I, I kid you not. Yeah. If I'm sad mm -hmm. at my big age. Come on. I call my grandma. Yeah. Um, I had a praying grandmother. Okay. I had a praying grandmother. Come on. Um, I... Ask me the question again. The question? <laughs> <'Cause I> was, <laughs> How do you maintain your high level energy so you can magnetize versus chasing it? Yeah. My support system. Mm. My, my, my family, my sister, my mommy, my grandmother, they keep me up. If I'm making sense. No, you make making sense. Stop overthinking it. Like I have to, I have somebody to not prove right because they already believe in me, but it's like, yeah, just prove, prove you. You have a standard. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Like I, I have people mm. that give me energy. Yeah. And that's how I keep it up. I siphon yeah. from them. Yeah. Like you got something to spare. Yeah. You got a word of advice. Yeah. You got a prayer. Yeah. You got a hug. Yeah. You cooking. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's real. Do you that's got real. something. Yeah. And I come, like, I can always go home. Mm. And I can pull from it and I can keep on going. Mm. How important is it to use people? In a healthy way. Wake it up. Um, when... Like you and I were talking. Okay. I can share that conversation. Yeah, of course. Um, you need to surround yourself with people who can lift you up mm. and that you can pull from. Right. You know, when you use people in a nasty way, you're going to get nasty results, mm. I feel like. Yeah. But a lot, like when, when you use, when you barter. Yeah. We're bartering energy. Mm. We can grow. We can expand. We can yeah. advance. Yeah. And we can do so much more. Like if I got ten dollars and you got ten dollars, we got That's twenty. 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We gonna you flip it. Yeah. We can yeah. Do something. Yeah. But you know, if you got ten dollars and I got ten dollars and I'm trying to get eight from you, mm. that's not. It's it's not gonna work out in my favor. In that's the a end, fact. that's a in fact. The long run. That's a fact. Um, so this whole like using people thing, like you have to. Yes. You have to. Um, you need people. Yes. And anybody who say they I don't need you, you you need somebody. You need something from somebody. To you know we be lying though. Yeah, we be lying all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, people love to lie. Nah, facts. People love to lie, but me, I need people. Same. I need you. Right. I need you. Yeah. You got me. Right. You see, like you need people and. You take what you can, mm -hmm. but you need to give something back. It's, mm -hmm. like it's give and receive. So how do you tell someone who was raised in a practicality environment? I don't even think contextually that made sense, but just raised around practical people who. Yeah, people who it, just got to work for you know what, what they I'm have. Saying? They don't get no joy. They just right. go to work, come home. And so how do you tell run. them that you can give without it being monetary? I think they, oh, I don't want to say, I think they know that already because obviously they might have a mindset of, I don't have anything to give you. Right. And it's like, your words are enough. You mm. are enough. Your spirit is enough. You make me laugh. You don't understand how your little joke brightened my day. Yeah. You know, you don't understand how your smile filled me up. Wow. You know, if you don't have anything to give me monetary, you don't understand your listening ear, mm -hmm. how it helped me. Yeah. 
you know, release mm-hmm. the words that you, you know, like you can give of yourself yeah. and, and keep a lot of yourself to yourself, but right. you can give of yourself and build somebody else up. Like wow. it's not going to hurt you. Now, of course, boundaries. We talked about those. Yeah. Facts. Have your boundaries. Like, okay, yeah. that's enough. Now I'm dry. Yeah. Get off. Yeah. Um, but you can give those little things just like a, hey, you're doing you're doing so good. Reassurance. You look nice. Mm, thank you. Know, you. No, I like, you know, <laughs> like I like what you did over there. Yeah. Ooh, you know, like yeah, I see you. <laughs> I love you know what I love? I love hyping my homies up. Yeah. Like my male friends. Like I love hyping them up. I love giving them hugs, mm-hmm. saying I love you. You know what I mean? Like You never we, know who needs that and when they need facts. it. Especially men. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's like you may need a hug. This man may need a hug. Facts. The other day, literally, my cousin um been to prison multiple times, man, but has a beautiful, beautiful heart. Mm-hmm. Right. And um I remember the other day, literally, I had uh, we actually had a little fender bender um, because he took what I said the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Just miscommunication. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even going to lie. Like, you know, old dames, because I am, you know, used to be a hothead. um, Almost came out to where I felt the need to have to protect myself. Right. Yeah. But then I realized, wait, he might just be hurting. So it took a lot. I ain't going to lie. It wasn't immediate. Yeah. It's I had to take a walk, right? Calm down. But when I went back to him and I was like, cuz, just give me a hug, bro. Mm-hmm. When I tell you that man laid his head on my shoulder, right then in that moment, I knew it. Shout, shout out to uh Don Miguel Ruiz, uh, the book Four Agreements, man. The first agreement is don't take it personal or never take things personal. And um that's very important to not do that. You know what I'm saying? So guess what time it is? What time? Six fifty two. We've been talking just well, you know, so to wrap. Hey, what's your what's your uh, handle? Tyra talk too much. Yeah, I want to change it. Is that a bad thing? Change it to what though? I'm not gonna say. I already have it because oh, I can't say it. Um, you don't have to. Okay. I'm, yeah, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have I just kind of want to be like, when you think Tyra talk too much, because my cousin told me that she was like, you know, you can't just sit in quiet, and I was like. You know what? You're right. Yeah. But is it a bad thing? I like it. You know why I like it? Because I like it's like one of those things to where you uh, connect with people off of a quote unquote flaw. Right. Yeah. Because I don't want because when she said it, I took it personally. Yeah. And I was like, wait, but it's true. Yeah. I do talk way too much. What's if wrong you with know that? me, it's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, which is why we have great interviews. Right. You know what so, I'm saying? I mean, you get what you get. I'm not going to shut up. I tried it. It's hard. I can't. Yeah, don't force it. <laughs> so it is 6.53 p.m. Yes. Great conversation as always, right? Mm-hmm. Um, One thing I wanted to wake up was what we're working on currently. Ah, yes. Would you like to do the honors to introduce it? Um, Yes. Go ahead. So um, I don't know if you guys, well, if you follow me, you watch my story. Um, I posted something about uh, Solange posted. We're having a cry, a crying session at eight yeah. at my place. Yeah. Um, hit me up for details. And I posted it and I'm like, OK, went about my day. But no, mm-hmm. it was real for me. Yeah. It was real for me. I needed to release. I needed to cry. Yeah. I needed to feel. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I cry often. I'm a big old cry baby. I feel. I will cry. I don't care. Right. Okay. Because I'm feeling it. What you gonna do? Wake it up. <laughs> Wake it up. Um. And I believe people need a space to do that. Mm. We were talking about unplugging, unwinding, yeah. mm-hmm. and connecting. Yeah. And you were like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. And. It's a safe space. Mm-hmm. We want to create. You good? It's the bottom. Yeah. We want to create a safe space for people mm-hmm. where they can come cry. Yeah. No phones. Yeah. I mean, you can have your phone at the end, but we want you to really connect. Be present. Communicate. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like be here with us mm-hmm. and your secrets are safe. You don't got to tell us your deep, dark secrets, but if you have something on your mind, you have something on your heart. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about how we can ground and yeah. how we can find that balance. Yeah. It's the connection. Yeah. Mm. And 
you and I. Yeah. We're going to create that space for people Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. where they can come and they can talk and they can be and they can feel Mm -hmm. and they can be human Mm -hmm. for 60 minutes and be here with us and be present. And you can go back to whatever it is you like to do. Yeah. But a moment of decompression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually want to be here for someone. Yeah. I actually want to be the light for someone. Like you said, if I can't give you anything monetarily, I got a listening ear. I Mm. got arms. Mm. You can come cry on my shoulder. Yeah. You can come talk to me. Right. And it goes nowhere. Mm. I think that's my favorite thing when people tell me their secrets. Yeah. I take so much pride in that. You'll never find anything out of me. You could waterboard me, torture me. I'll never tell. Oh, man. Well, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, look, we was I'm about afraid. to go. I'm like, hey, look, <laughs> I was about to look. I was about to take it there too. I was about but, to like, so if somebody, hold no, up. But. I'm being sarcastic, but I take that seriously. Facts. That that I'm someone's safe space. Yeah. And the fact that you heard me mm. and brought it out, it's like, hmm. Yeah. Maybe I, that's my purpose in life. Mm. it's to be a safe space for someone because I know what it's like to sit in the dark and be alone and like no one understands me yeah. somebody does Yeah. and we're going to find you to somebody that understands you mm-hmm. we're going to help you understand yourself mm-hmm. That's and then part. I might learn something from that as well it's yeah. again a bartering of energies mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. a safe space on this earth where you can be like if I know I can't go nowhere else and do nothing else that's a fact I'm going to call Tyra. I'm going to yeah. call Dame. We're yeah. going to do this. And it also, is it's something that we're not charging ever. No, no. You know what I mean? It's this is free to be. Yeah. So uh, y'all definitely be on the lookout for It's a Safe Space. Y'all heard the beautiful words that Tyra said, but just to give a synopsis, you know what I mean? Like, it's just time. You know what I mean? It's time for us to come together instead of waiting for people to give us that space. It's time for us to make it and take it. Yeah. Um, with that being said, uh, there's too many spaces nowadays that's exploiting us. Yeah, right? no content. We're not recording this. Yeah, this isn't for content. No. This isn't for the gain or nothing. Mm-hmm. This is for us. So um, any last words? We're about to wrap it up. It's 6.58. No, thank you. For what? For letting me talk. Letting me be. Let me get my thoughts out. Mm. This is a safe space. Come on. You're a safe space. Hey, hey. <laughs> when it's in your and it's on you. It's Dig. in your and it's on you. <laughs> like, nah, let me stop. But um, thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for allowing yourself to just be a human being yes. and come in and just have good, genuine conversation. That's what it's all about for yes. Tapped In. You know what I mean? We just mm-hmm. tapping in within ourselves. It's a moment of decompression. So I'm happy for the partnership where we can expand it yeah. and make it even bigger and better. And um, yeah, y'all. So just be on the lookout for It's a Safe Space. Where can they reach out to you? You can find me on Instagram at Tyra Talk Too Much. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really always on there. My okay. Facebook, mm, eh, you don't got to follow me on Facebook. Yeah. Follow me on Instagram at Tyra Talk Too Much, and everything will be right up in the link. Yeah. Right there. Come on. Um, but yeah. Wake Call it up. Me. Hey, <laughs> once again, thank y'all so much. And it is yours truly, Camus Leonardo. Tune in to the next episode. I don't know when, but you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> y'all have a good one. It's your baby mama's favorite DJ, DJ T.Y.